everyone, this is Rosie, and today I am going to demonstrate how to convert a bag making file from PDF to SVG using Affinity Designer. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to say is that converting your PDF bag making files to an SVG file is strictly for your personal use. You cannot share or sell those files. I'm going to open up Designer by double clicking on the icon and I am working on an iMac desktop. And this method will work for many of your PDF files. It will not work for all of them based on how the designer originally set up their files. You'll go up here to the top left corner and you wanna click on File, New. And you'll see this screen come up here. You wanna go all the way over to the right side. I have the page width set to 8.5 inches and the page height to 11 inches and the DPI is set to 72 and those are really all the settings that I need for right now. Then I can go down to the bottom here and hit create. Then you'll see this screen next and this is where we can upload our pattern pieces. Now you do not need to upload the entire PDF file. You only need to upload the pages that contain your actual pattern pieces. So once again, we're going to go right up here to the top left hand corner and choose File, Open. And you'll be given a screen where you can choose where your file is once you locate your file. You can click on it. You'll see an image of your file come up and then click Open. Now, here is where we can load up individual pages. I already have mine set. You can see right here it says load pages and there's a little button up here it says load all pages and if I click up there it's going to load my entire document but if I select load pages then it allows me to enter just the page numbers that I need and I already have mine entered in here it's 32 to 35 so you would just type that in then click open and here are all your pages what I have uploaded here is my own original pattern. It's for David Sling, which I recently released. And I only selected a few of the pattern pieces for demonstration purposes. You're going to notice that each pattern piece is on its own white page. These pages are actually called artboards in Designer. And you can think of an artboard as just being a piece of paper that you would write on. As you can see, we have four artboards, but we only need one. So we're going to delete three of them. I want you to look over here on the left side of the screen and you're going to see a column of tools. The one at the very top is an arrow. That is called the Move Tool. If I highlight it, you can see it says Move Tool right here. Underneath it, we have the Artboard Tool. And that is the tool that we use to work on artboards, including deleting them. So I will just hover on that one and click on it. And now the Artboard Tool is activated which means I can select any one of these artboards. And you know it's activated because it has a blue bounding box around it. I want to keep the artboard at the top left and eliminate the other three. So to delete them, we simply hit the delete key on the keyboard and a pop-up window comes up. There are two options here, keep objects or delete objects. If I choose delete objects, it's going to delete my artboard plus my pattern piece. And I can demo that by clicking Delete Objects, and you could see everything is gone. I can restore it by hitting Command Z on my Mac. Now, we'll go ahead and try that again, and this time we're going to choose Keep Objects, and the artboard is gone, but the pattern piece is still there. Now I can go ahead and delete the rest of the artboards in the same way. Next, I want to make the remaining artboard larger, and I can do that just by clicking on it to activate it. And then I can drag the edges of the artboard to make it larger. Now I want to go back to my Move tool, so I will click on it, and then to activate it, I can click anywhere inside the artboard. Now I want to rearrange a few of these pieces here. So I'm going to select them and move them. I want to rotate this one 
and if you hold down your shift key as you're rotating it will snap into place at a 90 degree angle and then I'll do the same thing with this one here To create our SVG files, we only need the outline of each piece, and then we can delete the rest of the information. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. One is you can select on each element and hit delete, but that's actually a little bit tedious to do. What I like to do is just click on the outline and drag it away. I'm also going to pick up my two inch test square because I want that one as well. And then I can go ahead and highlight what's remaining by dragging my cursor over it and hit delete. Now if you go to drag one of the outlines away and the entire piece is moving, that probably means that the piece is grouped together. So you want to go up to the layers panel and click ungroup. And now you should be able to reselect it and move away the outline. So now we have all our outlines and we will go ahead and delete the rest of the information. And I want to move all of these pieces back up to the top. Now my goal here is to do all the preparation necessary so that when I import this SVG file into Cricut Design Space, there's nothing left to do except cut out my pieces. So the pieces that I have here along the top will be cut out from exterior fabric. These two pieces will make up the back. This is my test square and these three pieces will be for the front pocket. Then I'm also going to need some lining fabric for the pocket. So I want to duplicate the three pieces that I have here. So I've selected them. Then I can go up to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Now I'm not using the keystrokes that you could normally use because I only know the ones for Mac. I don't know what they are for PC. So I'm just trying to show you what you would need to select from the top menu. So again, these pieces will be for exterior fabric and these pieces here will be for lining fabric. The next thing that I need to do is merge the two pieces of the exterior back so that it becomes one piece. So I'm going to select both halves and I'm going to go over here to my alignment tool. And the first thing that I will do is align the tops so that they're even with each other. I can go down here where it says align vertically and choose this option which says align top and now those tops are even with each other. Now I need to eliminate the space between the two halves so I can go up to this icon right here and it says space horizontally. If I hit that it's going to butt the two pieces together. Now you need to look at this box over here where it says zero PT. That means zero points. What it's telling designer is that we want to bring those two halves together with zero space in between. If we were to put in a value of say five points, then it would bring those two halves together, but there would be five points of space in between the two halves. So you want to make sure that that box is set to zero. And then we can hit apply. Now we're not done because even though we've butted those pieces together, they're still two separate pieces. So we need to merge them. And the way we do that is to go up to this icon right here, which says add. If we click on this, it actually merges them together. So now it's one piece. So I will click off of it and then click back on it again. And it moves now as one piece. And you also know it's one piece because that line that was in the middle is now gone. The next thing that I want to do is color code these pieces so that when we get into Cricut Design Space, it will be able to distinguish between which are my exterior pieces and which are my lining pieces and then it will set up the mats accordingly. So the first thing that I'm going to do is highlight all of the pieces on the top here. 
I'm actually going to have to move these ones down a little bit first so I can select my top pieces. And since I have them all selected, I can change the fill colors all at once. So if you look over here on the right side, you're going to see a color wheel, and then you're going to see these two icons right here. The one that's the solid circle is the fill color for the piece. And behind it, there's another circle that looks like a donut. That is the color of the stroke. So we'll start by changing the fill color of each piece. And you can go ahead on the color wheel here and select whatever you want. They're coming up black. And the reason why they're coming up black is because you have this little circle right here. And it's at the darker end of the triangle. So if you move that around, you can pick a color that you like just by moving that little circle within the triangle. Now we're going to change the color of the stroke. So we'll select the stroke icon and we want to change the color of the stroke to no fill. So we'll choose this little button right down here which stands for no fill. So now each one of these pieces has no stroke. So now I can go ahead and set the color for my lining pieces. Again, we want to choose the fill icon first, select a color. Again, we move this little circle around inside the triangle to get the color that we want. Then select the stroke icon and set it to no fill. These pieces are actually now ready to be exported to our SVG file. But before we do that, I want to show you how we can create something called a preset that will enable you to export your SVG files to Cricut Design Space every time without having to go and change your export settings. So you want to go up to File and choose Export. This screen will come up. You want to make sure that it's set to SVG. And now we're going to go ahead and set up our preset. Once our preset is completed, created, it's going to go in this area right here. So click on the More button. And this is the area where we create the preset. And the preset is just a list of settings that tells designer how we want our files to be exported. So right up here it says File Format and it says SVG and that's fine, that's what we want. Where it says Rasterize, you want to click this drop down menu and click on Nothing. Then over here it says use document resolution. You want that little circle checked. And we set our document resolution at the beginning of the video when we set the DPI to be 72. So you want to leave that alone. If you did not set your DPI to be 72 at the beginning of your project, then you would go over here, click use DPI, and you would put in 72. Just like this but I prefer to just use the document resolution because I always set my DPI at the beginning. Where it says allow JPEG compression, unclick that box. And then down here, you're going to see flatten transforms. We want that box clicked, but we want to unclick the box that says set view box. Now down here in this section, the only thing that should be checked is the flatten transformed. Everything else needs to be unchecked. So just to review quickly, you want to make sure that this is set to SVG. Rasterize is nothing. Use document resolution. Uncheck allow JPEG. And only check the flatten transforms box down in this section here. Then you want to go over here where it says manage presets. Click on that. And then it says create preset. And it will ask you to give to give it a name. So I'm just going to call it Cricut. And then I'm going to say OK. And then we can close. And I'm also going to cancel the export. So the first thing that I want to do is select all of the pieces that I'm going to export by dragging my cursor over every one of them. Then I'm once again going to go up to File, Export. And it should be set to SVG. And you can see that it's put my 
preset for Cricut right here. Now, if you don't see it, you can click this drop down menu and it's going to give you all of the options that you have for exporting to SVG. And of course, we want Cricut, so we're going to leave that alone. Now, look right over here where it says area and it says page 32. So, what does page 32 mean? Page 32 is the name of the artboard. If you look over here on the right side where the layers panel is, you're going to see the layer that is the artboard and it says page 32. Now why is it called page 32? When you import your PDF pages into Designer, Designer looks at the page to find something that it can use to name the artboard. On my PDF pattern files, on the top right corner of my written instruction pages, I have written page and then whatever, page number whatever. So this particular artboard, when it was imported, was page 32. But for our purposes, it doesn't matter what the name of the artboard is, and you could actually go ahead and change the name of the artboard in the layers panel if you want to. But over here, where it says area, page 32, this does matter. Because what that is telling designer is that we want to export the actual artboard plus all of our pattern pieces. And we don't want to do that. We only want to export the pattern pieces. So if I click on this down arrow right here, I can choose selection only. So now it's only going to export the pieces that we physically highlighted. And now we're ready to hit export. It's going to give it a name. You can change it to whatever you want. I'll just call it David Sling. And I'll save it to my desktop and hit save. Now we're ready to go to Cricut Design Space. And I'm going to click on New Project, Upload, Upload Image, Browse, choose my file, say Open, comes up with my images, say Continue, and then upload. And here's the project loaded into Design Space. I'll minimize the screen here a little bit. I'll reduce the size so that you can see it all at one time. And then I want to ungroup. And then I want to click on my test square and I want it to be two inches by two inches. And it is. So that means that all of my pieces have imported into Cricut Design Space at the correct size. And now all you have to do is hit make and go ahead and cut out your pieces. But I do recommend that you do a test cut on paper first. Well, I do hope that this was helpful to you. Remember, this is only one method to convert a PDF to an SVG file. There are other methods. So if this one does not work with a particular designer file, you can try one of the other methods that are available to you. I want to thank everybody who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I really would love to have you as one. I do also have a Facebook group and I would love to see you over there. It's called Rosie and David Patterns. So please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.